What is up good people of YouTube? This is Sean with Future View Gaming and I'm showing some more PlayStation gameplay. I figure I'm gonna get through some of this. But we're not talking about the gameplay today even though I have a pretty good game for y'all to watch. It's really just to kind of fill in the background. Now, what are we talking about today? We're gonna talk about gaming. We're gonna talk about Call of Duty. We're gonna talk about Battlefield and various other franchises and how innovations help and hurt from a development perspective okay first off Call of Duty same game every year everyone says that it is the exact same game it is with minor tweaks and changes they might fix certain things and they break certain things and it yeah I'm pretty sure you get where I'm going with that however they make changes and sometimes changing the formula doesn't help. Like Battlefield, they change the formula, sometimes it does help. I'll get into that in a second. Call of Duties. Everyone says it's the same game. Now the game that really made a pretty good size change to me was Modern Warfare 3. They added in their horde mode, which was survival, which I loved survival. I thought survival and the uh, chaos mode were freaking awesome. But... Other than that, they didn't do much right. Like, the game was horribly laggy, and it was just, it was not a game that I enjoyed so much. The lag, and then there was a try-hard aspect of it with the MP7 and the ACR and all the sh bullshit that people complained about. That people complain about in every video game where there's a gun that's pretty good that's a little bit better than other ones. Now... They added in the support kill streaks, which I thought was a pretty decent idea. And they didn't really overpower them too much either. It, it was all in all a decent addition, a decent innovation. They added in death streaks, which should have gone to hell. Death streaks really just annoyed me. And they kind of half-assed used it to leave in something like Last Stand, which was really annoying in Black Ops. Okay. The kill streaks and all that shit, to me those are the game's gimmicks that keep it going. You do these kill streaks and you get these rewards that get you X amount of kills, possibly if used right. It's a pretty decent concept and I'm not going to say Call of Duty takes no skill to be good at. Because it does take some skill. But does it take as much skill as Battlefield? N honestly, no. <laughs> Anyways... You look at the battle, or you look at Call of Duty. Their games don't change too much. There's a lot of games that are like that because the formula wins. All FPS games are essentially the same formula. You chase dude down, you shoot the dude, you get the kill. You have a raging nerd nerd boner to kill the next person. Okay. Battlefield adds in vehicles, and the vehicles and destruction are Battlefield's gimmick, just like the kill streaks are Call of Duty's. Okay. Now, look at other franchises. All right, the first one we're going to look at is going to be... I'm going to bring it back to the original PlayStation. I have a lot of history with this. Final Fantasy. I love the Final Fantasy franchise. It is probably my favorite franchise in gaming. Simply because it makes you think, and it's not something that's so fast-paced that you have to be terribly quick to play. Final Fantasy VII is still today my favorite game like of all time I love Final Fantasy 7 I don't care who has a problem with that now if you look at it it's a formula and it worked it was open world in a way not really winning the game open world but while linear in the storyline it was kinda open the characters were really to me really great they were really likable and that was the formula. The character development made that game fun. And the openness and the different stuff that you could do. We're not talking about the gameplay, the cheesing, and all that shit. Then there was 8, which had its own amount of cheesing that you could do. But 8, to me, was a pretty good game itself. It was still basi it was basically a reskin Final Fantasy VII on the base concept and everything but it was still a very good game in my eyes and I really enjoyed 8. I enjoyed 9 too. It was a reskin kind of brought back to the old school version of 7 and 8. Still had the open world basis but still you know it, it was 
still essentially the same game because that's what Final Fantasy was. Then 10 they changed it, which 10 was saved because it was a fairly playable game. It was the first one with the voiceovers and all that shit. I liked 10, but I wouldn't say it was my favorite. 11 was online. I played that one was my first real online game, and I played it off and on for years. So I enjoyed that one. 12 lost me. Like, it was such a short main storyline, but so much side quests that you could try and do it all, and you would just get horribly bored with it. But, I mean, that, that might just be me, in a sense. So, I don't know. But, yeah. You know, but these games show that when you start making these big innovations, like when 13 came out. 13 sucked. I hated that game. There's a lot of people who liked it. I only bought it because of the franchise tag. I did not buy 13.3, and I do not plan on buying it. If I get it free, I might have it sitting in my game library for years before I even play it. I still haven't beat 13 because I got so freaking bored with the game. And there's the nice snipe on the pilot. Oh, no, wait. That was the guy sitting in the repair seat. Okay, never mind. But, yeah. You know, that's just... That might just be me. And, but it shows that the formula works. Why change it if it works? You risk a lot by changing it. What's another game that had a formula that stayed kind of the same? Resident Evil. One through three were the same exact basic game. Solve puzzles, beat game. Solve puzzles, beat boss, beat game. Solve the puzzle, beat the boss, beat the game. Different scenarios, but in the end, still the same. However, the storylines kept you going. The characters were really engaging, a lot like the Final Fantasy series. At least to me, they were. You play the first Resident Evil, you look at that first cinema, and you're just like, what the fuck am I watching? This is so fucking retarded, and these people's acting sucks. But the game engaged you. The atmosphere of the mansion and stuff like that. All that shit engaged you. Even the shitty voice acting. You know, it was forgiven because the game was pretty good. Moving on, you got Resident Evil 4, which was a big change on the franchise. All the way through, a huge change to the whole thing. But it was a hit. 4 was one of the higher selling Resident Evil games out there. They make a mistake with 5 by trying to make it more action based than survival horror. And I liked 5 myself, but a lot of people really hated it. And you know, that's where they started falling apart. Six, I haven't seen many reviews on. I still haven't beat Six. I got pissed off with Chris's storyline where you get stuck with the big thing chasing you up the fucking tower and shit. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who got pissed off at that point. But th that's just showing you that the innovations that they try to add were not helpful, but sometimes they are game changers and they are game winners. Another series, Re the Metal Gear. I love Metal Gear. It is one of my favorite series. I have always loved it. The storyline throughout that series is fucking incredible. Even if it ends up being kind of the same thing throughout the games, you're playing as some legendary special forces guru, you know? But the game was just a beautifully, beautifully designed, beautifully played game. I really enjoyed it. And I know a lot of other people who really enjoyed it. So, yeah. You look at the first one. The only problem I had with the first two was the fact that it was fixed camera with shitty angles, which made the game harder. When 3 came out with the follow camera, I loved Metal Gear Solid 3. It is probably my favorite in that series. Even though everyone would tell me, oh, no, Metal Gear Solid 1 was the best. You know, whatever you want to believe, you can believe. I like 3. Now, 4, I have beat in every single way, shape, or form, and I enjoyed 4, too. There were other innovations in it, you know, that made it more fun. Made it fun. So, yeah. Rising, I really didn't enjoy too much. It was such a huge change, but that's what it was. It wasn't designed to be a Metal Gear Solid. It was Metal Gear Rising. <laughs> And hopefully more Metal Gears are coming out that are going to be as awesome as the first original sets. Now, while I'm talking about it, look at Battlefield. The innovations made in it. 
you know, you had Bad Company 2, which was a great game from what I hear. I've never played it. And Battlefield 3, which to me was a big game changer. It was, I love the vehicle warfare, and I love the fact that you have so much variety of shit that you can do in this game. And that makes it so much more fun to play. The fact that you have so much that you can do. You can fly, you can drive, you can run, you can pretty much kill people in any retardedly fucked up way possible. You can snipe them, you can crossbow them, you can C4 them, you can troll them, you can just regular kill them, you can go try hard pro on them. You know, there's a lot that you can do in this game. And that's what keeps me on Battlefield. The cha the difference in between it and Call of Duty is the innovation to it. But what's the biggest game breaking change? Suppression. In my opinion, they say suppression wasn't in the other ones, so suppression was their big problem. And the fact that EA never listens to its people. Dice is pretty good about some about listening to a degree. And Battlefield 4 looks like a lot of people got their voices heard, that wanted their voices heard. A lot of people in the community were heard, which is beautiful, you know? And, yeah, you look at other games that have these formulas that are essentially the exact same thing. Look at Madden, okay? I'm going to touch the Madden franchise that everybody loves so much. It's the same game every year. I don't really give two shits what anybody says, but it is the same game every single fucking year. Okay? But the formula works for some people anyway. I personally cannot stand Madden. I think that EA are assholes for buying the rights to the franchise in the NFL because they eliminated the... NFL Blitz games and they eliminated my NFL 2K games that I enjoyed the hell out of. So, yeah, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to say kiss my ass EA Sports for that. But then they completely failed on the basketball end and NBA 2K is awesome compared to NBA Live, what NBA Live was. But that's where a formula that works can take over, you know. If they hadn't bought the rights to the NFL, then 2K probably would have raped them on the NFL too. EA Sports would not make the money that they make. But EA is responsible for the Need for Speed series and stuff, even though they have kind of fucked it up. I wish they would come out with like another game like Carbon. But it doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon. However, that would be what I would say would keep me interested in you know playing Need for Speed because I didn't really enjoy the newer ones <laughs> so yeah you know I'd like to hear what you guys have to think about this this is all just my opinion you know and there's a lot of people who have good opinions and I hope that my points are valid and you know while I'm on the subject of gaming let's talk about tryhards I have noticed on the PC there is such a tryhard mentality on PC gaming. I mean, oh my god, I play Team Deathmatch to unlock stuff, and it seems like the only times I'm getting killed are by level 100 colonels with 100 service starred M16s, and it's like, really, what is your fucking point in using that gun or even being in here? I guess you're either you're trying to score per minute horde or you're just having a bad day. I don't know. I wish I knew why people did that. Because there's a lot of people who are just trying to get unlocks or learn the game. That's what Team Deathmatch is kind of for in my eyes. So, you know, you're not playing competitively right now. So why are in a competitive server? So why not pick up one of the other 500 guns that you have like three kills with and unlock some attachments and get to know them maybe you'll figure out that hey I'm actually a good player and I don't need to rely on this weapon that I've played my entire career with you know I don't think I've well I know I haven't gotten 100 service stars with anything so you know that might just be me not having as much playtime as a lot of those guys but 
I like to say that it doesn't make me a better player, but it means that I understand how to diversify my weaponry. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just an afterthought. You know, I'd like to know what you guys think about the gaming industry and what you think about Battlefield. Like, we know what to expect out of Battlefield 4 after E3. I've seen some of the videos, though I haven't paid much attention because I do not want to get disappointed by DICE. I get disappointed. I've been disappointed by gaming companies who go to E3 and release all this shit, and then the game still sucks. So, I do not pay much attention to those to the gaming shows and shit like that anymore. <laughs> the only thing I know is that they made it to where you could drop a skyscraper in Shanghai. You know, is that going to be the only map with that level of destruction? Is that the only building that's destroyable in that map, or can you level the whole city? You know, that would be kind of fun. Being able to do that much more destruction than what you can in this game. <laughs> so, you know, I'd like to know what you guys think about what I'm talking about. Let me know if I hit on one of your favorite game, like, series and subjects. And basically just tell me what you guys think. Leave me a comment. Leave me a rating. You know, it always helps. If you're not subscribed... There's a subscribe button right next to my name. Just go ahead and click it. You know, it all helps a lot. And hopefully, I will have more videos coming out for you guys. I plan on doing a lot more uploading a lot more regularly. So, get at me. Give me feedback. I will always appreciate feedback, criticism, anything. And pretty soon, I will be putting up PC gameplay. So, y'all have that to look forward to as well. Anyways, y'all take care of YouTube and have a good night.